Hey guys, Iggy with Dragon Blogger again. Today I'm going to be building a computer for you inside of the Fractal Design Define R4 case. Before we actually build the computer though, we got to worry about one very important part. Motherboard, CPU, and the CPU heatsink, probably the memory too. So let's get started with that first. Then I'll walk you through the case. Hey guys, this is a standard socket 1155 CPU motherboard. All right, so there's a bunch of different sockets, uh, different CPUs fit in different sockets. This particular one is socket 1155. So with that, I have a socket 1155 processor. What we're gonna do now is install this bad boy. So. First thing we do is push this lever down. Well, first off, when you buy a brand new motherboard, this comes covered with a uh, piece of plastic so that you won't bend these pins. You have to make sure when you're installing on this to not bend a single pin. If you bend a pin, the motherboard could be dead. And if you want to send it back to the motherboard manufacturer, if it has a single bent pin, you're not going to get an exchange. Newegg, Amazon, anybody, even the manufacturer themselves, Asus, Gigabyte, Intel, whoever, they're not going to take it back. So be very careful with these guys. Don't touch them. And they bend very easily. So with that said, to install this, what you're first going to want to do is push down on this little lever right here. Push down and then pull away and then you see how right here as you're lifting it it pulls away it pulls out of that little uh, retention mechanism and then if you push down more that lifts so there was very little effort it's very light if you're pushing really hard you're doing something wrong just nice and slow now I have my CPU that I want to insert. So what I'm first going to do is, if you notice right here, if you notice right here on the CPU and right here on the CPU, there's two little notches. Those are to guide you installing this. So now I'm going to look for those two notches on the motherboard. Looks like there's one there and one here. So let's go ahead and see if that's the way you install it. Pop it in very lightly. You kind of just drop it in there. You might need to move it around a little tiny bit. All right. So now if I do this, it doesn't go anywhere. It's in a good spot. Again, little retention mechanism here and retention mechanism here. Those are to let you know you did a good job and it's installed properly. So now, Put this down and just little to no pressure whatsoever just push this down just enough so that it goes under here and then push this down you can let go when that's already down and then slide it under here there is going to be a little pressure now you're going to have to push a little harder than you did before because now this is actually a CPU there right here and right here that's pushing it down to keep the CPU in place and to let the, the pins and the bottom of the CPU connect. Make a connection and that's how everything works. So now you got that part. And now we zoom out a little tiny bit because we're going to install the CPU fan. Typically CPU heat sinks come with some sort of thermal paste or thermal compound, thermal grease, there's a bunch of different names for them. But unfortunately, I've used this guy a few times and there's nothing there anymore. So for now we're gonna go ahead and put a little thermal paste on the CPU. This is just one of them, Arctic MX2. So I'll go ahead and people like to do it a bunch of different ways. I like to put just little dab in the middle 
Whoa, 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 whoa. That's too much there. All right, that's a little too much, but that's okay. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. You can use a little uh, paper towel. That's okay now. Could be better, but I'm not going to focus too much on that because I won't be overclocking and everything. If you're overclocking, you're probably going to want to pay a little more attention to how you apply the thermal paste because you want to get the best kind of application on there so that this connects a little bit better and you get a lot better cooling. But I don't overclock and it doesn't look like I'll be making any big pockets. You don't want pockets of air either. So that's going to spread out as soon as I apply this guy on here. I'm going to be putting this on here. I'm not going to go over too much on how to install this particular CPU heatsink because there are billions. Some better, some worse. If I ever get something to review for you, for you guys, of course, I'll show you how to install that one. So now that that guy's in there, I want to insert the thermal peg, um, the uh, retention pegs. Now that that's on there, I'm going to want to go ahead and apply this guy on here. This is the heat sink. And I'm pushing down now so that the thermal paste spreads evenly on the CPU. And then I'm going to tie it, screw this down. All right. You don't want to screw down too tight because you might mess up the, uh, the threading, but enough so that you can't go anymore and you don't want to push beyond that point. There you go. All right, now that we're done installing the heatsink, typically you would want to put the CPU heatsink fan, but this kind of fan gets in the way of the RAM. So typically you would, there's, there's a frame here, a frame here, and a frame here. I cut this frame off because that was getting in the way of the RAM. That's okay, it has nothing to, doesn't help the structural integrity, at least that one piece. So, for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and install the RAM. This is DDR3 RAM, okay? You'll notice right here, there's a notch on the board. The RAM also has a notch, so you want that to match up. You don't want to install it like that because the notch doesn't match up. You want to install it like that. So here, Asus, like everybody, has this little latch that locks things in place. And then this side doesn't have a latch. That's where you actually slide the RAM in. So we'll go ahead and slide it here. Push down. And if you notice, the little latch went in a little bit. Sometimes you need to push a little bit more, not always, but the RAM's all good and snug in there. So now just rinse, wash, and repeat. If you have to push this too hard, you're doing something wrong. Just make sure it's DDR3 RAM and you have the notches matched up. If it's DDR2 or DDR4 or even DDR1, EDO, fast page, whatever kind of RAM you have, only DDR3 will work on here. You may have a different type of RAM than I have. This particular board takes DDR3. Your board may take a different type of RAM. 
always make sure you have the right kind of RAM. So now that we have that installed, let's go ahead and install the CPU fan. I'll put this at an angle. This particular CPU fan connects. You put one latch on this side and then one latch on this side. So it's not going to go anywhere. And then, and then you want to make sure that you attach this guy, the CPU fan, to the CPU connection. This one says CPU optional, and this one says CPU fan. Being that this fan is not optional, I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the CPU fan. It'll have four pins. You'll notice there's four pins here. So I'll go ahead and there's also, I'm sorry, if you can't see these little ridges, these are to tell you that, hey, look, install here because there's a ridge here. And that ridge aligns perfectly with that plug. There you go.